Before this video starts, I will give credit to Gacha Smack because I'm inspired after watching his video and I wanted to give my own perspective today. I will put credit to other content creators that you showed in my video. Also, I'm not discrediting Genshin for the whole video, I'm just going to show the difference. Hello everyone, and Kingstar Zero here. Well, it's very sudden for me to talk about Woodring Waves because I never mentioned this game on my channel before. I have known this game since the game was announced back then, but I don't have any idea what to talk about before. I have seen this game as a next big, big potential game because this game broke a huge different aspect to gacha games for the open world action RPG genre. But I have seen that a lot of people and players have made misconceptions about Woodring Waves when this CBT2 come out. Uh, mostly a lot of Genshin players are issuing this game as a Genshin copy. Well, if we move back to Genshin first release, Genshin is also being called a Zelda Breath of the Wild copy. At that time, uh, there is a drama between Genshin and Breath of the Wild fans. So it doesn't mean Genshin is a pure original game idea. Genshin itself also took an idea from other games and Hoyo first developed it to make their own characteristic. And this also happens to Woodring Waves. If we want to judge a game as copying another game, first we need to see the game in a holistic way. We need to see the difference between every aspect that the game has and the game provide to us. Uh, the first aspect I want to mention is the world vibe. Well, I don't know what this is called, but yeah, uh, let's stick with a uh, world vibe. Genshin has a colorful and chill world style where we can enjoy the, the beauty of the world. Most of the place has a colorful tone and vibe where it can make the player feel chills when playing this game. It, it's different from Woodring Waves. Woodring Waves uh, took an apocalyptic world vibe, where most color tones are dominated by a dark color rather than a cheerful tone. The world itself also gives us a scarier vibe rather than a chill one. We already can see that these two games are already having a different time, a different world style. As this was, if this was not enough, let's take a look at the character build. In Genshin, uh, we need to farm artifacts from a domain to get artifacts uh, with random starts. In Woodring Waves, the artifact was a bit different from Genshin. We can see that the artifact system, which is called Echo, can be gathered from killing enemies in the open world. Uh, by the way, I'm using other people footage because you know, if you watch this video. Echo can also be dropped by boss. And if you want a uh, Echo bo boss Echo, you need to defeat the boss first and claim it with the energy system. Well, for the boss Echo, uh, this seems the same as Genshin. The same, this seems the same as in Genshin, where we need to use uh, energy to claim the artifact or echo. But in Withering Waves, we can also farm the echo from monsters in the open world, maybe from normal uh, enemies or elite enemies. Well, from this build aspect, we can see there is there is also a difference in it. Well, if it's still not enough, let's take a look at the main dish of this video. The combat system. The big difference that caught my eyes to see this game as my next biggest wishlist game is because of the combat system. The Genshin combat system is heavily focused on team rotation, elemental reaction, team composition, and dodging for survivability. As for Woodring Waves, this game has a big difference in the combat system. Woodring waves are mostly likely to close to source-like game, 
where you need to deal as much damage as possible to the enemy and also consider your survivability when in the battlefield. As I have seen until now, even though the characters have element, uh, yeah, but Woodring Waves don't have an elemental reaction system like Genshin did. But they have the most, uh, but they have what most hack and stress games have, and it is a quick trigger event, or we call it QTE. Besides having a QTE, Woodring Waves can also summon the echo that we equip to the characters. I'm just only mentioning the offensive aspect. Remember I said before that Woodring, Woodring Waves is most likely close to souls like game. And because of that, we also need to consider our survival ability in the battle. Well, th this is the interesting part. Woodring Waves has dodge and parry for us. With dodge and parry, there will be more chance for us to survive and defeat the boss. Oh yeah, also, they have a broke or stun bar when you facing a boss, where if the bar depleted or finish the boss will be stunned for a while well as i already mentioned from the above i can conclude that these two games has have a very big different details on how the battle or fight will go the genshin combat system is heavily focused on team rotation elemental reaction team composition and dodging for the survivability while woodring waves provide qte uh, echo summon and then for the survival beauty they provide dodge and parry you can also see that in genshin we can use up to three characters in a single party while wooden waves can only up to three characters per party and maybe for the final part i'm going to mention the difficulty of this game I mentioned that Woodring Waves is most likely close to Souls like games, which most likely which most Souls like game will is it's a hard game, right? And then um, because the game also provide dodge and parry uh, during a battlefield, it means we can uh, uplift the chance for us to survive in the battle. But that doesn't mean the boss or the enemies in the game it's gonna be easy well because they provide dodge and parry so it means that we need to use this dodge and parry as good as possible to dodge and parry the enemy's attack because when i seen some content creators uh, when they're playing some bosses are going to deal a lot of damage you if you fail to dodge or parry so yeah uh, be sure that be sure to know that uh, the game is going to be harder. Well, I think we are already in the final chapter of this video. I have concluded the difference be between these two games. Now I will give my own opinion outside the game aspect. Well, Genshin has dominated the gacha games market for almost four years. There are no other games that can compete with Genshin popularity. Even though Honkai Star Rail can compete with Genshin, but Honkai Star Rail has a, the same company as Genshin did. Even so, I know that every gacha game will have their own player base. But Genshin is too dominant in the market. In fact, it's, it's also because Genshin doesn't have any competitor in the market. For the past 4 years, Genshin remains unshakable, even though there are a lot of dramas and everything, Genshin still on the top. With the domination of 4 years, maybe if there is a new Genshin players or a normal people who, who which their first game was Genshin Impact, they are going, uh, uh, they are going to knew that. Maybe Genshin Impact is the first gacha games with open world action RPG genre. So, if there is another game with the same genre comes out, they will call this game copying Genshin Impact. Well, that's not maybe 
that's not wrong because you know the four years of domination is a very long time for Genshin and it's also because there is no other gacha games that comes out for this past four years well there is one but I cannot mention Tower of Fantasy being the competitor of Genshin because the game itself can only compete with Genshin in less than a month yes you know uh, Tower of Fantasy come out and then maybe uh, two or three weeks later Genshin Impact announced the 3.0 update which I think one of the best update in the game and you know Tower of Fantasy just drop uh, just drop the popularity and yeah uh, the game itself cannot compete with Genshin right now because Genshin is still on the top while Tower of Fantasy are maybe below the other games until right now Woodring Waves and maybe Arknight and Phil introduced themselves as the new uh, gacha games with open world action RPG genre which means that maybe the, maybe for, for Woodring Waves and maybe for Arknight and Phil uh, this I can say that these two games are a Genshin competitor because yeah they have the same genre for the most part Overall, with gacha games that have an open world action RPG genre, Woodring Waves will be the new Genshin competitor. Because I also cannot wait for this game to release, I will do more content about this game in the future. Well, that's all from me, uh, leave a like if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see another content like this. I will see you guys on the other video.